Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to talk about Ruida controllers on your laser. I don't know about you, but when I first got my laser and I was trying to learn light burn and the operation of the laser, the control panel was the last thing that I wanted to learn. It just looked a little intimidating to me. And what I found out after about six months of using the, my laser and basically spending most all of my time in light burn is uh, once you learn some basic things to do in the control panel instead of light burn, things get a lot more efficient. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through some operations that you should know in your control panel on your laser. Um, there are three se uh, different sections in this control panel. We'll go through each one, what it's telling you, uh, what you need to know about it. Um, we'll go over some very basic things like how do I change the speed of the laser head when I'm just driving the laser head around the bed. Maybe there's some fine tuning that I've got to uh, find a very specific spot uh, on my laser bed and, and it's too fast. I can't get it dialed in that way. I'll show you how to change the speed not only when you're just driving the laser head uh, around the uh, laser bed but also after you've got a file loaded. There are some very powerful features in this control panel that a lot of people don't know about. What I was doing for the first six months is if I needed to tweak a file, change a speed, change a power, I would go back to Lightburn change it there, resend the file back to the controller and run the file from the controller. And that worked fine. The problem with that is if I had to do that four or five, six times to get my settings dialed in, um, that's a lot of back and forth, a lot of wasted time. What I've since learned is I can dump that file to the, to the controller and I can change my speed and or power in the, in the controller as I'm playing with the file and then once I dial in my settings, I can take those settings back, modify my light burn file, and I'm done. So I don't, I don't have all that back and forth stuff. Um, so that's one thing that you can learn, that even if you just learn how to uh, modify your speed and or power in a file without having to resubmit it or go back to your light burn file, um, it will save you a ton of time. We'll also uh, look at some, there's three different sections in this window, and we'll look at all three and what each section, what, what it does, what it means, what those numbers are telling you, those kind of things. So stick with me if you would, let's go look at the controller and how it functions. Let's take a quick look, a quick tour around this uh, Ruida controller. Um, you have your pulse button right here, this typically is when you want to do a mirror alignment. Uh, you will push the pulse button. It will send a quick uh, shot of uh, turn on your laser. And this pulse button relates to the maximum power that you have illustrated here. The first thing that you will notice uh, with all the things that I'm going to talk about here for a few minutes is we currently don't have any kind of a file loaded. There's no uh, graphic here, there's no layers illustrated. Um, and if you wanted to get back to this, basically the home screen, you would just put in escape, it would wipe everything out. And then you would be basically at uh, your controller without a file being loaded. When, you, when there's no file loaded, you'll notice here that this gives you a file name. This is just the last file that it, it had ran. Um, the speed, this is currently what the speed is set to if you're driving the laser head around. And so if you would drive this laser head around, um, it's traveling at uh, 111 millimeters per second. And uh, at 20% maximum power for a pulse. This has nothing to do, these two uh, uh, powers and speeds have nothing to do with your file. This is what's currently uh, you're working on with your laser when you don't have a file loaded. So let's say that you wanted to slow the speed of your laser head down because you uh, needed to drive it to a very specific spot on your laser bed. Then what you would do without a file being loaded is you would push speed and you notice that this matches this. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna come and we're gonna move this cursor two spots to the left. 
and I'm gonna arrow down, and I'm gonna basically change that from 111 millimeters per second down to 11 millimeters per second, and I'm gonna hit enter. And now you notice that this number changed. Now my laser head is much, much slower in driving it around the bed, and you can get very uh, precise about where you want your laser head. Just remember that this is gonna stay this way until you change it back. So if you would leave it this slow, and then you'd load a file and go to preview it, it would be very painful to, just because it would be very, very slow to, to preview it. So typically you always wanna change it back by going to speed, going back to 111. That's, this is just what I like to use. Right around 100 millimeters per second is the rate that I like to drive my laser head around the bed. And then I would press enter and now you can see that it's back. So when you don't have a file loaded and your speed is illustrated here, um, you can change that speed here and what that will do is that will change the rate on how fast your laser head goes around the laser bed when a file's not loaded. So to continue uh, the operation without any files being loaded, let's say that you were doing a mirror alignment and you couldn't see the pulse on a piece of tape, your power was too low or something like that. You notice right here, my maximum power is set at 20%, but let's say yours was set at 10% and it, you couldn't see the mark on your tape when you're trying to do a mirror alignment. You would just come up here and you would go ahead and change the maximum power. So what I would do is I would push menu, I would arrow down to max power, hit enter, and let's say that I would change that to 30% and say enter. And you notice now that my max power is 30%. So when I hit this pulse button, the power was increased by 10%. So you could see that mark on your tape. So typically when there is no file loaded and you see a maximum power indicated here, it's, it's for your pulse test, okay? Um, and so that's how you would adjust it, whether you need to turn it up or down for mirror alignments, those kind of things. Um, again, we would just go to max power. Enter. I would reduce this back down to 20%, hit enter. And you can see that that changed back to 20%. So when there's no file loaded, your pulse and your speed are illustrated right here. Now let's take a look at um, some basic commands that you should need to know how to use when we have a file loaded. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna show you is just how to load a basic file. And so I've sent a file over from Lightburn. I've used the send button and not the start button. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, if, if there is no file loaded here, if there was a file loaded, you can always hit escape and basically uh, clear your screen out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to file and I've got my logo that I've sent over. The other thing that I will tell you, um, just so you know, you'll have all your files here and then the little number next to it is the count on how many times that's actually been run on the laser. So. You can see that this one is a count of zero, so I know I have not run it yet. Once I find the file that I want, I'm gonna press enter, and that's gonna load the file. Couple of things, you've got three different areas of this control panel. Usually your left hand side of your control panel illustrates the graphic that you're getting ready to laser. If you don't see some of the graphic that you thought you were gonna engrave and it's not illustrated here, there's no reason to go any further. You might as well go back and find out if you didn't select it, because if it's not illustrated here, it's not gonna be lasered. The next section over here is going to be, right now, is going to be uh, uh, just your original speed and your power. And then down below, we've got, these are your X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, but below that, you should have all your layers listed. And within those layers, you should have speeds and powers. Now, in order to go ahead and uh, 
change, if we would start to uh, run this file and find that it was too uh, light or dark, and we wanted to change the speed or the power on this particular layer, the secret to this is I cannot change that until I actually start the file. If I try to, if I try to change it right now, and I go down to let's say maximum power, it's going to refer to to the uh, to the uh, the setting when a file is not loaded. So that won't do us any good. What we've got to do is we've got to come in here, and we've got to select it. And then we've got to have everything all set up and ready to go and start it and pause it. So I started it and then I paused it. Now, this information here is loaded in the controller and I can go ahead and change my speed or my power. Let's say that I wanted, let's say that I wanted this logo to be a little bit darker and I wanted to jump the, the power up from 23 to 25. I would go to menu, I would go to max power and hit enter. And you can see that it was at three, I'm gonna take that to 25, I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm gonna hit escape, and then I'm gonna hit start. That's not good enough, I'm gonna hit pause. I'm gonna go back up to menu, I'm gonna come down to max power enter and you can see we started at 23 i'm up at 25 i could uh, adjust it to 27. i could keep going back and forth until i get my desired power and that's how you change power on the fly just remember you have to actually have started the uh, file or this process will not work Okay, so we've got our, we saw how we can change our power and our speed is no different. We actually have to start the file and pause it before we can change the speed. So I'm gonna start the file. I'm gonna hit pause right quick. I'm gonna come over here to the speed button now. Hit speed. And right now it's at 400, but let's say that I wanted to slow that down a little bit. I'm gonna take that to 350 and then I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna hit start again, and it will change the speed. Now, if for some reason I let it go for a little while and that's not quite right, I pause it again, I hit speed, and I can go down to even maybe 325. Hit enter, and start again. Pause. And if I just wanted to verify that it's took, my current speed right now is 325 millimeters per second, even though the layer shows it to be 400. So just remember, it's not actually changing the layer settings. You're just changing the settings currently within, and you can see the current setting right now uh, with the maximum uh, speed, or excuse me, maximum power and your current speed. These will illustrate what's currently being run on your laser. So the nice thing about that is you can go ahead and get these dialed in so you can get the look that you want. And these would be what you would want to go back to the light burn file with and update your file. Okay, a couple of other things. Right down here in this lower bottom left hand section, that is how long it takes or how long the laser took to run your file. So this file was two minutes and 45 seconds. This is the second time that I ran this file. So your counter is here and your actual run time. The other thing that I'll point out is you notice that the graphic itself is kind of jagged, stair step, those kind of things. This is normal, meaning that this is gonna show you without the scan offset adjustment. Um, so, um, don't let that bother you. That's the way it's supposed to be. If you've got a scan offset adjustment to input into your uh, into light burn, it'll compensate for it. But uh, don't let that worry you if it's all kind of jaggedy. It's not going to be lasered that way as long as you have your scan offset adjustment correct. So same thing here. Again, we've got our current layer and uh, speed and power. And 
those are about all the areas that I use. The other thing here, at least on the newer controllers, um, these up and down arrows is your Z adjustment or your bed height. So this would be to uh, lift your uh, Z up or your bed up or down. Well, as you can see, with just a few simple steps, you have the ability to go ahead and change not only your speed, but your power as well on a file. Then once you have your settings dialed in, record those settings, go back to Lightburn, plug in the new information, and you're good to go. It saves you a lot of time. I hope this information was helpful. I'd really appreciate it if you guys like, subscribe, and if you like the content on the channel, a big thanks. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.